So you may know that on Tuesdays, we usually have Bible study here at Canterbury. And this Tuesday, I, past Tuesday, I was overwhelmed at the insights that students brought to what we were studying. We were studying this particular gospel. And it really reminded me that there is such a thing as the priesthood of all believers. And that is that everybody can talk to God and everybody can hear from God without having to be mediated by meddlesome priests. So I've learned in this Bible study with the students things about God and faith and the Bible that I didn't learn in seminary. So just remember that we can all communicate directly with God. Um, and bar none, we each are loved dearly and deeply by our God. Um, and so having Bible study with the students is wonderful for me. And I was reminded this week by them just how much God is very much in love with each of us. Um, it'd be nice to just end it here because that's a great note to end a sermon on. But I should probably talk a little bit about slaves and all of that not so wonderful sounding stuff. Um, I'd rather preach on the first two lines of the gospel because that faith as small as a mustard seed stuff. There are times when it seems like that's all the faith that I have. Faith this big, this big. Some days that seems like all the faith that I can muster. And just that little bit, and I'm sure that wouldn't even get me through a silent prayer. But that is the rub I've discovered because Jesus says that is all the faith we need and we already have it. Still, we have to look at the passage and talk about the slaves and the entitled master. That whole passage really offends my 21st century ears. It hurts my soul to hear not only that there was a slave, which may have also been a servant, but to hear the entitlement in the voice of the master saying, hey, do what you, you know, serve me first, even though you've been working hard. Um, but again, I think it's important for us to remember that Jesus is using, in this case again, metaphor, to make a point for us about our own personal faith in God. In this passage, Jesus is not advocating for either slavery or entitlement. He's simply illustrating a point. He's saying that when the world operates like it ought to, when the world operates like God made for it to operate, then you and I and all of us, then we all obtain the blessings of faith life. None of us, when the world works as it's supposed to, gets better blessings from God, and none of us gets more blessings from God. And so Jesus is telling us today that he can't give us more faith. It's not that he won't, he can't, he's not being mean. We can't get more faith because there's not more faith to give. Because faith is not a thing. Faith is not a possession. Faith really isn't a noun. Faith is a verb. Faith is our being and our doing. And so when we live just a little bit into the verbness of our faith, when we do faith, when we live faith, well, then it becomes more and more a part of who we are and what we do very naturally. So when faith shows up in our being, it's because of our doing. There's nothing more to add to it. You can't add to it. Besides, asking for more faith, I'm willing to say, you know, more isn't necessarily better. I kind of like the phrase, less is more. Um, I think that more is better is very much a false lesson that the economy of the world tries to teach us. But God's economy is not free market capitalism. More is not better. Karl Marx, notwithstanding, and Ludwig, v. Mies, Ludwig Mies van der Rohe, notwithstanding, in faith, you don't get more because you do more. And in faith, you don't get more because you had more to begin with. It's not an item to collect for our coffers. Faith is who we are. It's who we are as made by God. And it comes out through what we do with God's grace for the world around us and with the world around us. We don't have faith. We do faith. We live faith. And doing and living our faith, that makes us more of who we are as God has made us to be. You see, when we do faith, then we're sharing grace automatically because that's what faith does, shares grace. Our doing of faith is poetry in motion with the Holy Spirit. 
Our doing of faith is music to God's ears and it is life for the world around us. Your faith is already gorgeous and it's beautiful and it's already enough, just like you and I. We're already beautiful. We're already beloved by God. You already are more than enough to God and for the world and to infinity and beyond. I think today's lesson from the gospel would be clearer if you would let me rewrite the passage and put it in the Bible and say, make the conversation between Jesus and us or Jesus and the disciples go more like this. So we say, hey, Jesus, increase our faith. And then Jesus says, no, trust your faith. I can't increase your faith because faith isn't something you own. Faith isn't even a noun. Faith is the action of loving God and of loving yourself and of loving others. Faith is turning toward God and inviting others to join you. Faith is a living, it's a giving, it's moving constantly. Faith is a flowing that never stops going. And as long as it lives, faith gives. Faith is God pursuing us and us pursuing God. Faith is not a collectible. It's a verb. And if we just trust it a little bit at a time, then faith bears fruit a little bit at a time. But our doing faith and our being faith, it's beautiful and it's blessed. And it blesses God and it blesses the world and it blesses us too. We cannot have more faith but we can live more faith. Pray with me. God, guide us to accept faith, to do faith, to be faith. Lead us to be joyfully surprised by what faith moves in us and others. Amen. Amen.